In this video, we are going to use the three steps to sketch method to sketch a graph of y equals sine 3x. So here's our method outline, and we've got our equation and our grid. And so note that we are graphing this equation that is an unshifted sine graph. It's in the form y equals a sine bx. And knowing that helps us easily identify a and b. So we see a is an understood one as the coefficient out in front of sine. That means our amplitude or our distance from midline to maximum or midline to minimum will be just one unit. And we know that b, that coefficient in front of x, is three. And b is really helpful. First of all, it tells us that we should have three complete cycles of sine that happen between zero and two pi. It also helps us find the period. So we'll do that next. To find the period of a sine graph, calculate it by two pi divided by b. So in this case, our period is two pi divided by three. All right, and the final thing we want to do to get this graph set up is to choose scale labels. And so with this method, it's nice to find your horizontal scale, and this is what you'll label your tick marks by, by finding or taking the period and dividing it by four. So you'll have four nice equal pieces of your graph. Okay, th this will be really helpful for the next step, so all your key points will line up on your tick marks. It's not the only right way to do it, but it's a nice, neat, and efficient way. All right, so take your period and divide by four to get the horizontal scale label. So that's two pi over three. Divided by four may feel a little clunky, so we can multiply by its reciprocal. So multiplying by one fourth does the same thing, but it just makes it a little neater. So let's cancel that common factor. And we see we should be counting by pi over six to label our horizontal tick marks. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Our vertical tick marks can usually be one, or you can look to A to help guide you there. So since A is one, we'll let our vertical tick marks be counting by ones as well. All right, let's take a moment to label our tick marks, and then we'll move on to step two. So starting with horizontal, we're counting by one pi over six. So we count one pi over six, two pi over six, which reduces two pi over three, 3 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 2, and 4 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. It's nice to stop and take a minute to double check here. So our period, or the length of one horizontal cycle, is 2 pi over 3. With this method, with this setup, you should always have your fourth horizontal tick mark match your period, and we do. So we should feel like we're on the right track. All right, let's keep counting. So we have four pi over six, which reduced. So now we have five pi over six, six pi over six, which reduces, seven pi over six, and eight pi over six, which reduces. Okay, and that should be a second cycle. So if one cycle takes two pi over three, it makes sense that the second cycle should happen at, or should end at four pi over three. All right, take a moment and label the other side of your horizontal axis to match. It'll just be with negative values. So I'm going to pause and put those on there. Okay, so hopefully you took a moment to label the negative part of your horizontal axis. And now we can label our vertical, label our vertical axis counting by ones. Okay, and I'm just going to go up to three. We don't even really need to go that high knowing that our amplitude is one. All right. So we have found our essential information. We should feel like we really understand what is going on with this equation and how the graph should look. So we can move on to really the easy steps. Step two, we'll plot our key points. And so our key points for a sine equation will always follow the same pattern. And notice we don't have a negative out front, so we know we follow the original pattern here, which is zero, maximum, zero, minimum, repeat. So let's do just that. We start this unshifted sine graph at the origin. We have zero. Our maximum we know happens at the first tick mark. 
and it will have a y coordinate of 1 because a is 1. So we have 0 max, 0 at the second tick mark. Min happens, minimum happens at the third tick mark. So we'll find the y coordinate by just taking the opposite of our original a. All right, let's go ahead and place a point that will be the start of the next cycle at 2 pi over 3. Just to have that in place, we know we'll start with another 0. And that's all there is to step two. Step three is to sketch and repeat. So sketch in our sine curve. A little bit neater. Got our sine curve here. And let's repeat. So starting again at two pi over three zero, we know we have zero maximum, zero minimum, repeat. And you can see if you would continue in this direction, we won't actually label it, but we had one cycle that happened at two pi over three. That's where it finished. A second cycle happened at four pi over three. So hopefully you can imagine that at six pi over three, AKA at two pi, you would have another cycle that came in here and finished at two pi. So that would match what we knew from the very beginning b is 3, we should have three cycles that happen between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, and if you wanted to continue the pattern, we can do that on the negative part of the horizontal axis as well. I can even start eight tick marks over from where we have our green cycle. So we can have 0 maximum, 0 minimum, and repeat again, 0 maximum, 0 minimum. So you can see once you've done the hard work of analyzing and graphing one cycle, it's really pretty easy to get as many cycles as you could want. So this was graphing y equals sine of 3x with three steps to sketch.